You may have heard about software code or infrastructure as code. Well in this video we'll be talking all about pipelines as code. If you're familiar with tools like Azure DevOps, CircleCI, GitHub, GitLab and Jenkins, you may have noticed a trend where these platforms are allowing you to define your pipelines as code. In this video we'll be defining a multi-stage pipeline in Azure DevOps and picking up some tips along the way. To start, we have a brand new project in Azure DevOps. We'll kick off by initialising a new Git repository, and you can see that we now have a git repository initialized with a readme file. As we now have a git repository, we're able to move across to Azure Pipelines and create a brand new pipeline as code. If you're familiar with Azure Pipelines, you can create a pipeline using the classic editor, which is UI driven, or there are several options above to define our pipelines as code and store that code in either Bitbucket Cloud, GitHub, GitHub Enterprise Server, or an Azure Repos Git repository. We'll store it in the repository we just created, and we'll create a new starter pipeline. But notice there are several example samples here that you may be able to use, just like in the classic pipeline creation experience. Now to save that pipeline, we're going to go ahead and commit it to our main branch. But in the real world, we'd want to follow our branching strategy. We'd want to have some kind of review process before it reaches our production code base. So to do that, let's go ahead and navigate to our repository, to the main branch, and apply a branch policy. I'll be requiring a minimum number of reviewers of one, and allowing myself to make my own changes. But in a real-world scenario, I would be more rigorous with my checks, but this allows me to progress with the video here. Now if we try to make a change directly to the main branch, you can see that it's no longer allowed and prevented by the branch policy. To continue working, we'll need to create a new branch for our development. So you can see that we're now going to be working on this code in a separate branch. We can improve and make changes to the pipeline code in that separate branch, just like we're used to with application or infrastructure code. That means we get the same benefits being able to work in parallel, test, changes in isolation so that we're not impacting the work of other developers. Now we can start improving this pipeline and making it a multi-stage pipeline. We'll first define a build stage, and that build stage will be very simple. It will just echo commands to the command line. Depending on our code base, we may need to compile code, pre-render some content, perform static code analysis, or run some unit tests. Within a stage, we can add multiple jobs. You can even define a job once and use a matrix to test across multiple platforms, dependency versions, or other combinations that you may need. Now we mentioned that we'll be making a multi-stage pipeline. That means we need to add another stage. So we'll create a stage for dev. But for this second stage, it's important that we add the depends on property and map it to the first stage so we ensure that Azure Pipelines knows that one stage takes place after another. Now when we add jobs to this dev stage, we will add a special type of job, a deployment. Under that deployment, we have a special property called environment. This maps to the environments that we'll see later in the video, so remember that bit for now. We can go ahead and deploy to our environment using different strategies, such as blue-green, rolling or run once. For this example we'll use run once. Now we'll add our steps again. So far we've been adding these steps as tasks, but we could use something called a template. In the context of Azure Pipelines, a template is a reusable set of tasks that we can use. These templates can even contain parameters so that you can pass in different values to the template as needed as you can see on screen. Once we've defined the template and resolved any errors in authoring the pipeline, which will be evident when using the pipeline editor, we can go ahead and save and run the pipeline. Now while that is happening, we'll navigate over to the pipeline section and take a look at environments. Environments help us to do a couple of things. We can see across all of our pipelines which runs have recently deployed into that environment, and additionally, we can also add approvals and checks to an environment. 
This allows us to add manual or automated approvals so that there is some rigor into what can be deployed into an environment. Notice that the My New Dev environment was already added for us. Azure Pipelines automatically created that for us as we had run a pipeline with that environment identifier. We'll go ahead and add myself as an approver for this dev environment. Once we run this pipeline once again, we can see that an approval is required to progress the deployments into that environment. And to finish, we'll commit the code for that pipeline back into the main branch as we're now comfortable that the changes are ready to go to production. As the pipeline is triggered by a commit to the main branch, this will once again invoke our CI CD workflow as expected.